Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, Welcome to uh, week six of our Beatitudes series. We are chronicling uh, the opening teaching of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount found in Matthew chapter five through seven. Here in these opening verses of chapter five, we have something so precious. Um, We have Jesus teaching um, all of us on how to pursue a lifestyle of blessing, a, a mindset of happiness. True peace is found in these words of Christ. And really, in today's lesson, we'll see that. We've come as far now as uh, the beatitude that talks about mercy. So we've titled today's session, Blessed Are the Merciful. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, that's where this beatitude comes from. Here it is. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Um, When you think about the Christian life, um, you can't fulfill your obligations to Christ without being in relationships with other people. Um, There are over 51 another commands, really, when you study it in detail in the scriptures. And so in order to fulfill uh, some of the sacred responsibilities that God has for us, we need to be in a, a partnership with God and in a commitment relationship to a church on having a really a, a participatory mindset as it pertains to reaching others with the gospel, serving and helping the least of these. And so mercy be, then becomes a very important part of the process because in addition to fulfilling our responsibilities within the context of church, um, we don't act a certain way at church and then leave it there like a uniform or a hat and we leave it at the office and then the next day we come back and put it on, meaning that we leave it there and we go home and with somebody else. So we're called to show mercy in the church and to others and we're also called to show mercy in our home. Uh, We're called to show mercy wherever we are. And so blessed are the merciful. God wants to bless you and I with more mercy as we're showing mercy to others. Um, And Jesus said it this way as well. In Luke chapter six, verse 36, he said, be merciful as your father is merciful. And so we best reflect God from a heart of generosity. And when that heart is giving mercy to others, we are being just like our heavenly father. And so the mercy principle, okay, the beatitude principle for this week says it this way, in a mean and messy world, you best represent Jesus with mercy. Did you get that? In a mean and messy world, okay? I, don't, I think if we, we took a survey right now, um, we wouldn't say the world is getting nicer, okay? It's getting meaner by the minute. By the moment, uh, there's more malice taking place. And so we best represent Jesus, especially in these times, with mercy. And so uh, let's take a look at this by um, taking a, really uh, doing a flyover view of the calling of Matthew, the tax collector, to follow Jesus. And we see really the mercy of Christ on full display. And understanding the context of Matthew's calling, um, it also gives us a, really a deeper understanding of this beautiful teaching of mercy. So turn with me to Matthew chapter nine here, okay? And this is what we read starting in verse nine. Um, It says this, as Jesus passed on from there, um, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office, okay? Um, He's over there at H&R Block. No, he's at the tax office and uh, there were tax ports all over. And uh, the Romans obviously were the ones who ultimately would be the recipient of the tax. And so you had tax collectors stationed strategically. They taxed your wagon on your axles. They taxed how many animals you had. I mean, they, you, you, think, you think the tri-state area is bad, okay? Um, the Romans uh, had a hand in taxation as well, heavy taxation. And so he sees this man, Matthew. And by the way, the name Matthew as you may know, means gift of God. And he's sitting at the tax office because he's a tax collector. Now we know by his name, Matthew, the root, the Levi, that he's a Jew. So check this out. We got a Jew collecting taxes for Rome from Jews. Tax collectors were very unpopular people, okay? Because nobody liked the heavy taxation, the heavy hand 
the yoke of the Roman Empire. That's why they wanted the Messiah to overthrow the Roman Empire. One of the reasons was because of taxes, okay, and just the overreach, the gross overreach of the Roman Empire. Um, but here's Matthew collecting taxes for these same Romans, and he, by heritage, is a Jew. And so they really hated him, but Matthew didn't care because being a tax collector, you made a great living, so he's doing well for himself, okay? And he didn't mind collecting taxes from the Jews. You know why? Because Matthew, we find out, Matthew's the one who gives us the words of Christ concerning the word hypocrite. It's Matthew who uses the phrase over and over again, the kingdom of God. It's Matthew who has more Old Testament quotes in his gospel alone than the other three combined. And so Matthew is, is steeped in Old Testament scripture. Matthew has a full view of the Messiah's reign and what it's to be all about. And because of his front row seat, because of his lineage, he saw the hypocrisy that was going on. And it was not about the mercy of God. It was... It was, for some, a money-making operation, but um, it, it was a lot of underhanded practices going on. People looked down upon others. People were anything but merciful. Matthew wanted nothing to do with it, so much so that he went to go work for the enemy, for the Romans. But Jesus, it says, saw a man. Don't miss that. Jesus didn't see a tax collector. He didn't see someone who was disgruntled. He didn't see someone who was fed up or frustrated. He sees past all of the human nonsense, okay? He saw a man. He sees a woman, okay? He sees what a woman's going through. He sees what a man's going through. He sees the kid. He sees the teenager. He sees the young adult. He sees the, the person in their old age. God sees us right where we are, okay? And he said to him, listen to these beautiful words, follow me. And so he arose and followed him. Now, this is a very important principle here. Because again, understanding the context of Matthew and why he crossed over to, to follow in Christ, but coming from collecting money for the Romans and being a Jew, it brings up a very important point if we are going to be people who show mercy to others. And you look at this from different angles. And the best angle, of course, is Jesus's angle. Uh, Jesus's view of people was not obstructed from an unmerciful heart. Uh, like a heart that wasn't humble. Jesus had perfect humility before the Father. So check this first principle out. Avoid the visual obstruction of pride. See, if our heart is prideful, it will get in the way. It will obstruct our view of people. Not so with Christ. Luke 5, 28 tells us that he left everything behind and got up and began to follow him. And this would be true of all the disciples, right, to some extent, who left, the, who left the taxation business here, who leaves the fishing business, who leaves family behind. Um, you know, when there's, when there's no pride that's involved, we can have that level of faith on our end. And thankfully, there's no pride from the Lord Jesus and how he looks at us. And so we want to make sure that we're putting that on, that mindset on when we're looking at other people as well. Secondly, write this next principle down. Use mercy to mend wounds, not inflict new ones. I like that. Use the mercy of God um, not to inflict uh, new wounds, but, um, but to mend the wounds of people. Look what it says here in Matthew 9, 10 through 12. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I like that. What's going on here? Well, Matthew celebrates his followership by inviting Jesus to his house, and he's already evangelizing. He invites his fellow tax collector friends over and a few other shady characters, a few other people who are not very popular in society, and it draws the scorn of the Pharisees because they go, what, what is your master doing? Why is he hanging out with these low lives, these, this, these people who are on like, uh, you know, the, the no-fly list, if you will, here, okay? Um, and Jesus sums it up by saying, you know what? Those who are well, they don't need a physician. But these people need me because they're sick. Now, they're not sick physically. There were people sick physically who needed Jesus. But these people were soul sick. And God's mercy was mending the wounds of their soul. 
the Pharisees are using mercy in their mindset to inflict new ones, okay? Uh, That was their version of mercy, to look down upon people. Now, Micah 6.8 gives us a reminder of what our direction needs to be as a person of God. This is what we're told. Oh, people, the Lord has told you what is good and what is what he requires of you to do what is right. Notice this, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. I mean, that sounds a lot like the Beatitudes, doesn't it? This is what God has called us to do. And so Jesus, um, the master teacher, um, using this moment uh, to also instruct whatever followers he had at this point um, about what it's all about um, and how we are to look at other people. We're to show mercy. That's what God wants us to do. We're not to rub people's face in their problems. Uh, we want to point them to the one who's come to rub it out, Jesus Christ. And you have people walking around like that at church, always holding people's past against them. That sounds a lot like the enemy, the devil, okay? Okay. Last time I checked, Paul told us to press forward, not to look behind. We don't want to look behind and rest on our merits. And we also don't want to look behind and look back at all the mistakes we made. We want to focus on the mercy of God. And so verse 13 of chapter 9 finishes up by saying this. Jesus said, but go and learn what this means, okay? That was a very strong statement to them, okay, some of these religious leaders. You go and learn what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. This really, for them, listen, they were all about their ceremonies. They were all about their tradition. Jeff, people like that today. They were all about their their version, their code of, their dress code and uh, their religiosity. And they were all about that, but they didn't have no interest in showing mercy to people. Guess what? God says, nope, that's not what it's about. I desire mercy, not your man-made sacrifices, okay? And the sacrifices that God did prescribe, they didn't mean anything anyway because their hearts weren't right. And so uh, you can do things for God of a religious nature, but if it's not for, for him fully and it's for us, for show, pretense, then what good is it? It's not. Jesus says, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners, notice this, to repentance. How beautiful is that? I've called people to make a change in their direction. Isn't that what repentance is, metanoia? To agree with God and make a change, to make a turn, to turn to God. I've called people to turn to me. And the only way that could be, guess what the, guess what the pavement, guess what the, the, the sign is, however you want to frame it. It's mercy, isn't it? It's not merits, it's mercy. And so here it is, the last principle to write down. Show mercy to those that need to be lifted up. Show the mercy of God to others. And that's here what is being done for Matthew, what is being done to those who are in attendance. And so Jude 1, 22 to 23, we end with, says it this way. Show mercy to those who have doubts. Save others by snatching them from the fire of hell. Show mercy to others, even though you are afraid that you might be stained by their sinful lives. Uh, Do yourself a favor. Never think you're above it. Never think that that you've arrived. Be the type of person in a mean and messy world who is showing mercy to others, especially those who need Christ. Let us be a people who are reflecting the Father in heaven. And really the best way to do that is to be a merciful person. May God bless you and may he give you the wisdom and strength necessary to be merciful. And remember the promise, blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy. God wants to multiply mercy in your life as you show mercy to others. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Enjoy your group discussion.